Hey, hope you're doing well. Andy here from Drive Steady. And in this video, I'm doing a comparison of one of the most hotly anticipated SUVs, the Genesis GV80, to some of its competitors, such as the BMW X5, the Mercedes GLE, and the Audi Q7. Now, the Genesis GV80 is an all new SUV. Actually, it's the first SUV that Genesis has ever made since they separated from Hyundai and kind of became this luxury branch. Think of Toyota and Lexus when you think of Hyundai and Genesis. But anyway, uh, the Genesis designs have uh, been looking really nice. Actually, the G80 sedan looks very similar to the GV80 SUV, and they both have really polarizing, and in my opinion, really good looking uh, aesthetics. Uh, overall, I've also read that the quality of Genesis is really well, uh, really good. It's a good quality product. Uh, but if you happen to just click on this video, you're probably cross shopping the Genesis GV80 with some of the other competition, or maybe you really just can't make a decision on which one to get. So in this video, I'm going to be answering questions such as uh, which car has the most interior space, legroom, headroom, shoulder room? Uh, how many people can each one of these cars sit? Are they front wheel drive? Are they all wheel drive? In addition to that, I'll also be looking at the pricing, some of the horsepower, torque, things like that. So if that all sounds interesting to you and you need a little bit of help uh, to make a decision, stick around and I hope to help you out. All right, so let's get started with the comparison. And the first thing I'm gonna look at is seating capacity. Of course, these are all mid-size SUVs and most of you out there probably either enjoy driving SUVs or need more space to put your family in. So uh, to answer the question of how many people or what's the seating capacity of these cars. So let's start off with the BMW X5. Uh, standard, it seats five people, but it does have an option for seven person seating, which is really interesting. I don't think the BMW X5 has ever offered that. The Mercedes is the same, five people seating standard, seven person seating as optional. The Audi Q7 actually is the only SUV in this group that comes standard with seven person seating. Next, the Genesis is five person seating and you have an option for seven person seating. So that kind of gives you an idea. If you have uh, seven seating uh, capacity needs, all of these SUVs have the ability to seat seven people. Now, how much space you have in the back is a different story, or at least in the third row, because uh, like I said, the Q7 is really the only SUV that comes standard with seven person seating. So let's use that as a segue into interior space, uh, headroom, legroom, shoulder room, which one of these cars has the most in each one of these categories. So let's look at this chart. First, looking at the first row headroom, the BMW actually has the most at 40.8 inches. And then when you look at the headroom, the Audi has the most at 41.7. And then when you look at the shoulder room, the Genesis has the most in the front row at 60.2. Now let's take a look at the second row. In the headroom department, the Audi's got the most, 38.8. In the legroom, Mercedes 40.9 shoulder room 58.5 and finally in the third row and as i mentioned before the audi is the only one that comes standard with three row seating and as a result of that they're the only ones who actually publish any of the metrics related to the back seat space so even though the bmw the genesis and the mercedes don't really publish any metrics for their third row seats i did a little bit of research and the thing i came away with is that this third row seat in these three SUVs is not really meant for adult size individuals. They're kind of meant for children. Uh, so if you're planning on seating a larger people back there, it's probably not going to be a good idea. Now, overall, when you look at these numbers, they're all pretty much close and within range of each other. But the one area I wanted to point out is specifically for the Mercedes. In the second row, it's lacking in legroom. It's actually almost two inches shorter than the competition. 
but it makes up for it with headroom where it's almost two inches more than the competition. So this kind of gives you an overview of what the interior dimensions are like, which one's got the most headroom, legroom, shoulder room, if you want to prioritize the front passengers, the rear passengers, or do you have or plan on having larger size individuals, adults, sitting in the third row. Now let's move on to cargo space because you're buying an SUV, you want something big, not only to store individuals, but you also want something that can carry all the stuff that come with those individuals. So let's look at these numbers a little bit. In the BMW, if you've got everything folded down, you have an impressive 72.3 cubic feet. In the Mercedes, 74.9. In the Audi, 69.6. .6. But in the Genesis GV80, it trumps all by a combined 84 cubic feet of space. Now this is 10 cubic feet more than the competition, which is the Mercedes at 74. 4.9. Now let's look at when you've got the second row up. How much space do you have back there? In the BMW 33.9, in the Mercedes 33.3, .3. in the Audi, remember you have three rows here, so the third row is folded down, but everything else is up. 35.7 and unfortunately Genesis didn't really publish anything here so I can't really give you a full comparison and with the Audi Q7 because you have three rows if you have all the rows up it's 14.9 cubic feet of space. Alright so next let's look at the features because uh, people are probably most interested in this information because now you've got all these fancy technology things such as speed detecting radar control. The car speeds up and slows down by itself when you have radar control on or, or cruise control on. And then you've got all these fancy safety features like blind spot monitoring. But uh, let's jump into it and let me give you what you get standard. Now remember, I'm not going to go into the higher trim levels where you pay more to get more, but what I'm going to do is tell you what you get in the standard trim levels so you don't have to pay extra money for all these additional things that you may or may not be looking for. All right, so let's take a look at this chart and of course I wasn't able to compare every single feature. I tried to just pick one of the ones that I thought were most important, but let's jump into it. So some of the cool things I like is when cars have LED headlights and taillights. All of these cars, except the BMW, have front and rear LED headlights and taillights. Next, the seat adjustments. The BMW has the most seat adjustments, 16 way. The other ones have eight way, some of them 10 way. So it just depends. Some people prefer this, some people don't. Heated seats. All of these have heated seats as standard. Now the next item here is the infotainment screen size or the technology. And because Genesis is the newest car of this group, it doesn't surprise me that it's got the latest tech. So you can see in the chart that the Genesis has the biggest screen, 14.5. And when you look at the pictures, it's a very impressive unit. It flows really nicely with the rest of the interior. Now, when you look at the competition, the BMW and the Mercedes have 12.3 inch screens. The Audi has a little smaller screen, 10.1 inches. But the thing to remember about the Audi is that it also has a screen underneath the main infotainment screen, which allows you to control the climate. But nonetheless, when you look at infotainment, the Genesis has the biggest screen. Next, let's look at the speakers. The BMW and the Audi have the most speakers at 10. Panoramic sunroof. BMW's got it, Audi's got it, Genesis I don't think has a sunroof period, but Mercedes has a traditional style sunroof. Keyless entry, this is extremely common. All of these cars have keyless entry. Next, this is another spot where the Genesis shines. Smart cruise control with machine learning. This is the car speeding up and slowing down when cruise control is engaged. While Audi, Mercedes, and BMW have the capability, but it is optional. Lane follow assist, Genesis has it, Mercedes has it, Audi and BMW do not as standard. The rear view camera, this is a government standard. All cars must have rear view cameras uh, for sale, at least in the United States. Next is another difference here as far as technology goes, but 
it's not in the same as what you saw in the infotainment screen. This is in front of you in the gauge cluster where you see the speed and the RPM and your gas level and other information about your car. The BMW, Mercedes, and Audi have 12.3 inch screens in front of you, while the Genesis has two analog gauges for your speed and your RPM. This is the traditional style gauges that you're aware of or that you're used to. And they've got a small TFT 8.8 .8 inch screen in the center. So if you're into the screen thing, BMW, or, or let me sum it up as the German competition to the Genesis, have you covered with screens kind of all over the place here. Okay, next, let's look at uh, the climate control system. The uh, BMW and the Mercedes two zones, the Audi and the Genesis three zones. Next, airbags, and I'm not sure why this information isn't readily available. BMW doesn't publish it anywhere, I couldn't find it. Mercedes has nine, same goes for the Audi, couldn't find it, Genesis leads the pack with 10. Next, we come to a whole slew of safety features. The one that most people are probably going to look at or like the most is blind spot monitoring. Now all of these cars come standard with some type of blind spot monitoring uh, but the Genesis is somewhat untraditional in its trim level or in its standard trim level. Uh, when you're driving, you typically expect to see like this little indicator in your mirror and it lights up when there's somebody there. In the Genesis, it's a little different. It actually makes an audible noise and it alerts you that there's a car there and it might even pull you back into your lane. So this is a little different. You do have the ability to get the indicators in the mirror, but that's when you bump up to a higher trim level. So that's one piece of information for you to keep in mind. Next, for the people who are concerned about uh, their phones and having connectivity, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard in all the German cars. But again, I couldn't find any information on the Genesis. They have something called Genesis Play, which is the closest thing I was able to find to CarPlay and Android Auto, but nothing definitive in any of the brochures or on their website or anything that I saw that has it. And next, split folding rear seats. All of them have split folding rear seats in the second row. In the Audi, of course, you have three rows and all three rows or all two rows in the back fold down. Okay, next, let's look at the dimensions. You're buying a midsize SUV. So how big is this car? Is it gonna fit in your garage? Do you have a low rise uh, garage entry? Things like that, maybe some people are concerned about. So let's just go over the exterior dimensions really quickly. First, looking at the length, the Audi is unsurprising the longest car. Uh, and uh, this probably hints to the fact that it has three rows. It's a full five inches longer than the competition here. In respects to the width, BMW is the widest car by a narrow margin, call it an inch. Height, BMW is the tallest car. And when you compare it to the Genesis, it's a full three inches taller. So this kind of gives you an idea. The, the Audi is the longest, the BMW is the widest, and the Mercedes is the tallest of the group. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna look at are the engines and the trim levels. Now, most car companies uh, kind of bombard you with a whole bunch of trim levels, and sad to say, it's no different here for all four of these cars. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you the trim levels, maybe give you some highlights for each one. So let's jump into it. The X5 has five different trim levels. It's the S Drive 40i, the X Drive 40i, which represents all wheel drive. They have a hybrid option here or a plug-in hybrid option here, the, the 45e, and then the M550, and then the M or the X5M version. Next in the GLE, you have more trims here than any other uh, car in this comparison. You have the 350, you have the 350 4Matic, which represents all wheel drive the 450 formatic, the 580 formatic, the 53 formatic, which is the AMG version, and then the 63S formatic. So you've got six different options to choose from. Then in the Q7, you have uh, five trim levels here, the 45 premium, the 55 premium, and the difference between a 45 and the 55 is basically the engine. The 45 comes with a four cylinder, the 55 comes with a six cylinder. 
Then they've got the 45 Premium Plus, the 55 Premium Plus, and the 55 Prestige. Next, let's look at the GV80. The GV80 is also not that far behind. They have the 2.5T, which represents the engine size. In the 2.5T, you can get it in a standard, advanced, and prestige. In the 3.5T, it's an all-wheel drive only. It comes in standard, advanced, advanced plus, and prestige. So the GV80 is not that far behind when you look at trim levels. They are somewhat playing that game, but some people like that. They like having the option of picking and choosing, having some things a la carte, having some things come in with the trim level. All right, so with that, let's transition into the engines. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm covering the standard trim level. As I mentioned, as you go up in the trims, you get more horsepower, bigger engines, all this stuff, and we'll be here all day if I went through every single trim level. So I'm just gonna go through the standard ones and point out some of the key differences that you get in each one of these cars. In the BMW S Drive 40, you get a three liter six cylinder engine, 335 horsepower, 330 foot pounds of torque, and it's a zero to 60 time of a very respectable 5.3 seconds. In the Mercedes, it's a two liter four cylinder engine, 255 horsepower, 273 pounds feet of torque, with a zero to 60 time of seven seconds. In the Audi, four cylinder engine, 248 horsepower, 273 foot pounds of torque, 6.9 seconds, zero to 60. And in the Genesis, 2.5 liter, four cylinder engine, 300 horsepower, 311 pounds feet of torque. Now the Genesis does not have a zero to 60 time published at this time. So let's just forego that. But when you look at these engines and the output that they make, the few notable items here are that the BMW shines in this engine category. It's the one that has the biggest engine, uh, six cylinders turbocharged versus the other ones who have a four cylinder turbocharged engine. And as I'm about to get to in the next category here, fuel efficiency, you are not sacrificing anything when you go with the six cylinder BMW. You also get the most horsepower and you also get the most amount of torque. In addition to that, you get the fastest acceleration. So if you're the type of person who likes to put your foot on the ground and really feel the torque and the thrust and you value acceleration and speed speed or performance, the BMW is clearly the leader in this category. And next, as I mentioned, let's look at that miles per gallon rating. In the BMW, 21 city, 26 highway, combined 23, Mercedes, 1926, 22, Audi, 1923, 21, Genesis, 2125, 23. So when you look at the fuel efficiency ratings, most of these cars come in pretty equal to each other. The BMW and the Genesis, 21 miles per gallon in the city, and the BMW and Genesis combined equal the same 23 miles per gallon. But remember, the thing to note here is that the BMW has the six cylinder engine, it has the most horsepower and torque, and typically these three things equate to reduced fuel economy. So it's very impressive by BMW to have the biggest engine, most horsepower, most torque, and be a leader as far as fuel efficiency goes. The one thing I forgot to mention about the Genesis in the previous chart was that it's getting 300 horsepower from a four cylinder engine. Now that's a very big achievement. You typically don't see a smaller, uh, a smaller engine like a four cylinder getting close to 300 horsepower. So good job to Genesis to squeeze all of that horsepower and torque out of a small displacement engine. All right, so now let's look at some of the final categories. Really quickly, uh, if you're into off-roading or a four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, what do these cars come with? Which one do you value? Uh, the BMW is a rear-wheel drive car. You can get four-wheel drive optional. Mercedes is a rear-wheel drive car. You can get four-wheel drive as optional. The Audi only comes with a four-wheel drive system. It's their famous patented Quattro system. The Genesis is a rear wheel drive or four wheel drive as optional. So all of these cars, much like the third row seat, you can get all wheel drive if you pay a little bit more, but I'm glad to see that uh, they didn't really cut any corners and all of them are at least rear wheel drive, if not four wheel drive. 
Next, let's look at the warranty. And this is where Genesis shines because it shares the same warranty as Hyundai does. And Hyundai has the best warranty in all of automobiles. First things first, the BMW, the Audi and the Mercedes, all the German competitors have the same warranty. Four years, 50,000 miles uh, that applies to your basic warranty and your powertrain warranty. And then the Genesis is actually where it outshines all three of the competition. It's a five year warranty, 60,000 miles. So you get an additional year plus 20,000 miles. And on top of that, the unprecedented 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. So your engine, your transmission, anything that drives the vehicle forward or backwards if you're in reverse, is covered for 10 years. Now this is a major selling point and it's an even bigger deal because the last thing I'm going to cover, I'm sorry to make you wait, is the pricing. So in the BMW, the entry level S40i is a cool $60,395. In the Mercedes, it's about $5,000 less, $55,800. In the Audi, it's pretty much the same as the Mercedes, $56,045. And in the Genesis, $50,325. Now in this category, you can see that there's a reason why BMW is charging a lot of money for that six cylinder engine, uh, for that panoramic sunroof and some of the safety features that it has that the other cars don't have. But the Genesis has some things that the other cars don't have, like that radar detect cruise control and it also has that 14 inch tablet screen in the infotainment area that a lot of people are probably going to like so the genesis coming in ten thousand dollars cheaper than the bmw is really amazing uh, and the next closest competitor is the mercedes at fifty five thousand so that's five thousand dollars more than the genesis now, the last thing I want to cover is lease prices and leasing is very popular nowadays, especially amongst the German competition. Uh, but the Genesis is also very competitive in this segment, as you'll see here. Now, some of the ground rules here, uh, I assumed a 5% discount uh, on each one of these cars. Uh, and remember, money factors and residuals are what dictate the lease price. And these things change from month to month. So if you happen to be watching this video several months from when I actually published it, these numbers may fluctuate and you may see different deals. In addition to that, I'm not counting any tax because for every state, for every county, it's a different tax rate. And in addition to that, I'm also not counting any dealer fees. Some of them have a documentation fee for like a hundred bucks. Some of them have other minor knickknacks that they like to sneak in there. But if you're unfamiliar with how to calculate a lease, I have a video which I will link up here in the right hand corner. You can check that out and that's a pretty easy way to figure out how much of a lease payment you'll probably have to pay. So without further ado, let's look at what you should expect to pay uh, on a lease payment for each one of these. The BMW, $725. The Mercedes, $735. The Audi $730 and the Genesis $625. So you can see in these charts that with respects to price, the Genesis comes in the cheapest car uh, and unsurprisingly, it comes in the cheapest lease car. So if you're price conscious, the Genesis is obviously going to be your most economical entry into this luxury midsize SUV market. But as I mentioned and covered in uh, this video, there are things you need to consider. Do you value four wheel drive? Do you value three passenger seating? Do you value some technology? Do you value a moonroof? Do you value some of these things? Do you value horsepower? Do you value a big engine? So I keep saying that word value because uh, that's a subjective thing. All of these things that I've given you are the raw objective numbers. So what, uh, what I wanted to do is help you understand how these cars compare so you have all the knowledge you need and you can apply your own value to each one of these cars and hopefully that will help you make a decision on which car is probably best suitable to what you prioritize and what you value. So that's the end of this video. 
I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, I'm sure I didn't answer all of them. Send me one down in the comments below. But thank you for watching. Until next time, drive steady.